So coming off to the end of the previous chapter, we saw Shoji and Koda ostensibly doing like their ultimate moves, I suppose. I mean, they might have like another true ultimate after this, considering it's not over, but this is the strongest thing that we've seen them do so far. And coming into the beginning of this chapter, we're seeing like what they are. So Shoji's move is called the Octo Expansion, where he creates like this Resident Evil arm and just launches like this massive strike. And it winds up hitting Spinner and it seems to be affecting him for sure. But on the other side of Spinner, Present Mike is also hitting him with like a sound blast and while i appreciate the teamwork here present mike is still kind of like stealing shoji's thunder in this sequence because this is like shoji's big moment this is like his big fight it's like present mike go do something else but for coda we're seeing that his ultimate move is also tied to like i guess his quirk evolution possibly or just what his quirk inevitably was always supposed to be because in the previous chapter we saw him like sprout these horns and now we're getting a flashback to when he was talking to his mother when he was younger and she's like you know koji one day you may also grow horns they allow our feelings to reach animals even if they're far away and the one other time that we saw shoji's mom in the series she did have those horns so it's like yeah horikoshi using the full cow here and this essentially just gives koda just a broader radius to use his animal manipulation manipulation ability and his quote-unquote ultimate here is called uh, the Hitchcock birds and yeah a little on the nose Horikoshi but you know it is what it is and it just summons like a swarm of birds and they all go after that paranormal liberation front top heteromorph guy that we've been seeing intermittently throughout these last couple chapters you know trying to egg on the crowd here trying to keep them with their cause but I guess this is Koda like defeating him probably because we don't see him again after this but going further after we see Shoji hit spinner he's like, you know, what do you want to protect with that giant body and those scales of yours? And then talking to the crowd, he's like, you guys too, what do you want to protect with those amazing powers you have? Don't give in to your wounds because then your children will be their next target. You know, saying like, hey, if you continue to do this, the prejudice against you is only going to get worse. Don't let revenge consume you. It's like, try to do as I am. Like, try to be better than those who have persecuted you. Because if you just react with violence like this, then you're essentially lowering yourself to where they were and you're no better. But Spinner's like recovering here, and he's like, hatred will never disappear. Even if the heroes win this, nothing will change. And that is technically true. Like, regardless if the heroes win or lose here, it's not like everyone's just going to be cool with heteromorphs now. I mean, of course, it's better if the heroes do win, but in order for this reform to take place, it's going to take many years. And that goes into what Shoji's ultimate goal for being a hero was. He wanted to become a hero that was so cool that it would influence future generations to not have prejudice against heteromorphs anymore. And eventually, it would get to a point of where everyone is accepted but then we get another glimpse into spinner's past as he's saying this and he's like even if we stay hidden on the shadows people will still spray us with pesticide and it's like yeah this apparently happened to spinner like he also faced serious prejudice just like shoji although not as extreme as shoji i guess but still to the point of where we can see that spinner was clearly depressed for a large part of his life like he was just a shut-in playing video games you know his room was just filthy and this is another reason why spinner was so on board with stain's car and why he latched onto that and became like a stain stand and then eventually became a shigaraki stand because he just wants a cause to latch onto something that will give him purpose you know he doesn't want to be a nobody as we'll come to find out hey but real quick guys let's talk about gamer subs because they just dropped a new flavor and it's made by fellow content creator on youtube jay schlatt well his new flavor is called milk yeah that's right it's called milk and i'm sure you're wondering like what could that possibly taste like well i'm curious myself so i'm gonna be trying it for the first time here and i'll let you know of course got my waifu cup that i always drink my gamer subs out of dump it in here well if this is what milk actually tastes like then sign me up because it's pretty good so guys if you're interested in getting some uh milk or other gamer subs and maybe a waifu cup if they're available please check out my link in the description or you can just use code big z when you go to the gamer subs website Thanks, guys and he's like if they attack us we strike back comrades raise your voice and follow me and then he like launches off of building and launches straight towards the hospital and shoji's like he's even stronger now my attack can even destroy concrete and at first you're thinking like well that's not really that impressive but then we also have to remember that we've kind of been desensitized by like izuku and 
Bakugo, Kirishima, and all of these way overpowered characters. That they're like the outliers of the outliers that, you know, Class 1A is already comprised of. So like Shoji being able to produce an attack that can destroy concrete is still really impressive, but it's just not everybody is on the level of like the top five students essentially. But Spinner winds up successfully breaking through the front of the hospital here. And then he remembers back to what All for One had told him before the war had started. And he's like, Kurogiri must be at the research tower. You reach him, play a recording of mine or Tomura's voice. Kurogiri's quirk will end this war. So I know I've said this many times, forgive me, but just for the people that are new here, I assume that All for One somehow knew that he would be in this situation more or less. Even if he didn't, he just thinks that Kurogiri's quirk is essential to his plan or non-plan. But in this instance, at least, Spinner can have Kurogiri activate his warp gate quirk and break All for One slash Shigaraki out of UA, where he is currently trapped, you know, having his quirks erased by Aizawa and Monoma and being, you know, severely beaten down by Izuku. So if in theory he gets out of there, he can just go full power and turn the war back in the favor of the villains. But then also using, you know, Warp Gate further, he can just bring all the villains together, which are currently, you know, scattered. But as Spinner and the heteromorphic mob are like breaking into the hospital here, they see like all of the doctors and nurses like standing united to stop them from going any further. And the heteromorphs are like seeing the doctors doing this, but they're also seeing them tending to patients and whatnot. And they're like, whoa, I didn't sign up for this. You know, I'm fighting for reform here. I'm not trying to just hurt innocent people. And this goes back to what Shoji was telling them. And I think chapter 370, when they were like holding Shoji down and he's like, you know, what's any of that got to do with attacking? the hospital you know back in the first war the heroes made sure that the patients and staff were safe before you know we engaged in the battle against yujiko and the nomus and everything and this got through to a lot of the heteromorphs at that time they're like whoa you're kind of right and now it's just fully gone through to them they're like yeah we're not about this and uh, they all essentially peace out and as we see spinner advancing through the hospital in this sequence he's depicted as like his younger self like happily running and he's like you know i always thought i'd be nobody but if i reach career Rugiri, then I'll become someone. You know, look, Shigaraki, look how many people follow me. And then when he turns around, you know, nobody's there. He's just by himself now. And it goes more into like the tragic fate of Spinner. You know, this is what he's become, along with allowing All for One to give him two extra quirks, which turns him essentially into like this no thing where he can't even speak properly. And then we see present Mike behind him and he's like, Shoji's voice has reached them and he won't be your trump card, referring to Kurogiri. And then in the final double spread here, we see arching Kurogiri, who's like right in front of them and spinner's like you know kurogiri and present mike's like shirakumo and that's where the chapter ends and it's like okay so who's going to get through to him here is spinner going to play the recording and like manchurian candidate activate kurogiri and warp gate shigaraki slash all for one out of ua or is present mike going to get through to him and then have shirakumo come through once again because we saw that that was kind of a thing or at least horikoshi was setting it up to be a thing because when present mike and aizawa were first trying to get through to kurogiri we saw that Shirakuma was kind of coming through, but he just couldn't fully do it yet. So to be honest, I think the former is going to happen here. Like I do think Spinner is going to play that recording and then he is going to warp all for one slash Shigaraki out of there and probably bring the villains together as well. But I think eventually Shirakuma will come through Kurogiri and then we'll just have Shirakumo again as a hero helping them eventually like before the series is over but just not right now but let me know what you think is going to happen in the comments guys and if you like the video please give it a like and please subscribe if you haven't already have a great day and I'll see you in the next one